Hello, today I'm going to be talking about The Girls by Emma Klein. This book came out just over a year ago and it is about a 14 year old girl called Evie whose parents have just divorced and she kind of ends up in a cult um, at the ranch and we find out from the beginning because it's told from retrospective of her middle age um, that the cult ends up killing some people and it kind of tells a story of how she was absorbed into the cult and what happened at the end of it. First thing I've got to say is that I read this book directly after reading one of my favourite books ever um, and it, they're kind of quite similar in sort of theme, definitely in mood, in era very much so um, and I think it's a really dangerous thing to pick up anything that's similar to a book that you love that you've just read because I was constantly comparing this and not in a productive way. I think the exposition was worse in this book, I think the metaphors were worse in this book, I think the way it glorifies kind of ugliness, although a lot more pertinent in this book, was done better in The Virgin Suicides and that's a shame because I did really like this book but I just absolutely loved The Virgin Suicides, it never stood a chance. As I got further through it though I managed to kind of separate them a bit um, and like at the start I was really annoyed that you knew exactly what happened at the end but kind of towards the end I accepted that a bit more and I did enjoy it. I think this book absolutely nails what it is like to be a 14 year old girl. At that age I was first and foremost a thing to be judged and that shifted the power in every interaction onto the other person. So 14. The way she's desperate for attention, the way she's always like immediately judging other people and obviously expecting her to be judged in return, her vague hidden shame for like things that she enjoys, the fact that she has like a best friend in school that she doesn't really value or respect. I think the characterization of Evie was just completely nailed. So I got about 30 pages into this book and I was like oh this is really like the story of Charlie Manson um, but didn't really think that much about it until I got about halfway through and I was like this is really the story of Charlie Manson. And then I listened to a podcast, there's this great podcast called The Last Podcast on the Left um, that talks about a lot of grim murdery stuff and they have a three part um, series on the Charles Manson family and it's fantastic, I'd recommend you listen to that, I'll leave links below to it if you're interested. What happened in the real story is that Charles Manson, who was in and out of jail prison since he was a child, um, had a cult basically, it grew a large following, um, he was really into music and thought he was gonna blow up um, and then eventually due to like a load of different circumstances. He was like perpetuating this idea of race wars um, to try and convince his cult to go into the desert. But there was also a lot of tension with other people involved and the music industry. And essentially the end of the Manson story is that they murder a lot of people. Eventually Charles Manson, all of his followers were found convicted. He is still alive, which is amazing. I re-listened to that podcast and I was like, oh, okay, this is a retelling of Charles Manson. Like down to the color of the school bus, it is exactly the same, apart from it is far less complicated than the real life version because that would go on for many books. There are quite direct reasons for the murders that take place in this book and it's just quite a lot simpler. For a while that kind of direct story source um, ruined this for me. I was like, I know what happens. I don't need a biography of that told like slightly fictitiously. But as I got closer to the end of the book, I started to really appreciate um, having this story told from a perspective of a young person involved in it. The ranch and the cult and everything is a really exciting framework um, in which to place this 14 year old girl and kind of discuss how she goes through it. There are a few things I'd like to discuss in reference to the cult. Uh, firstly and obviously the dull subtle drone of women not being in charge of their own bodies. Evie is kind of drawn into the cult by this 19 year old girl uh, called Suzanne who she absolutely idolises in only the way that a 14 year old girl can idolise a 19 year old girl. Evie immediately is meant to look up to the cult leader, Russell, and they very quickly get into a sexual relationship which is very very clearly like a terrible power dynamic um, and Russell kind of uses these girls, these young women um, to do his bidding pretty much, to get things off other people, to persuade people to come round to him and one time specifically Evie is 
essentially raped. I mean, she's 14 and she was totally pushed into it. Um, and she knows that she has just no autonomy over her body anymore. And that's really sad. Although I don't think this book presented anything spectacular about awkward power dynamics and like women's bodies. Um, I think it was an, an inevitable consequence of talking about a cult leader and their relationship with the women around them. I personally have thought and do think quite a lot about power dynamics in relation to like sexual abuse all the time. I know a lot about it. I read a lot about it. I think a lot about it. Um, but I can imagine if you if you haven't thought a lot about it, this would be like a really good for thought provoking novel in that respect. But for me, it was just kind of same old, same old. It was interesting seeing that play out in the context of Evie in the present day. Um, so as I mentioned briefly earlier, um, it is told from the perspective of her in the present day as a middle aged woman. She is staying at her friend's house and that friend's son, um, who's I think is 21, is doing a drug run and he comes to stay in the house for a little bit with a girl who Evie knows is quite young um, and kind of gets to see her relationship with, um, with this friend's son. So while she's telling her story of her being in the cult, you can also see this play out um, and she's it's almost pitying the way she sees um, this this girl and this boy interact and it's almost as if she's bowing to this inevitable power mixture that like boys will always have this kind of forcing upper hand um, which is very sad and it's sad to see that she can't really get through to this young girl and it's just a constant unrelenting cycle of um, skew power dynamics that apparently hasn't improved since 1969. One thing I straight up loved about this book um, is the last page, and I'm gonna tell you what happens. It's not a big deal, um, but basically she's staying at the house, she's going on a walk on the beach, and she kind of sees a man approaching her, and it goes through her mind, like all of the terrible things that this man is gonna do, um, and then he just walks by, because he's a normal guy, and it just really enforces that, like, lifelong trauma she's had to suffer at the hands of being involved in this scandal and with these people um, that I feel like wasn't reflected um, as she was telling the story because it wasn't very like retrospective um, and obviously in the moment she wasn't really thinking about how much lifelong trauma she's gonna have um, but that really like hit it home like it made it so much so much more complex and really gave a lot of life to like what would have happened between the events of the murder and stuff and like Evie living in the present day that isn't addressed a lot but just from that last bit you can understand how she's been going through life um, and what a struggle it must have been. I really quite like this book, it's no virgin suicides um, but I think the setting was fantastic and the characterization of mostly the main character um, was excellent and it was just quite a fun read. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let me know if you've read it and I'll see you soon.